Turkey Stuffing and Cerebral Palsy, Inspired by True Events, by Andrew Justvig. Characters, Janice, 50s. She is very active in her community and is always busy. She worries but finds solace in cleaning. Scott, 50s, Janice's husband. He works at a sporting goods store and is a former football coach. He loves his family and assumes the best in everything. Susie, 60s, Janice's loud, sassy, and opinionated older sister. She believes she knows everything and what's best for everyone. Kayla, late 20s, Janice and Scott's daughter. She has a big personality and knows what she wants in life. Greg, late 20s, Kayla's boyfriend. He has cerebral palsy. He's witty and not afraid to correct something someone said. Scene one, lights come up on a modern day living room with fall decorations here and there. The living room is immaculate. Janice is busy setting up the dining room table with fine china. There's a knock at the door and before Janice could start walking to the door, it bangs open as Susie walks in carrying a poorly taped box. At least you knocked this time. Well, only because I couldn't open the door on the first attempt. Oh, you do realize the bird and the stuffing won't be on the table for another 24 hours. Can't start too soon. Plus, I need to clean. You call this dirty? Oh, stop. When you come to my place, I'll show you dirty. Susie sets the box on the dining room table. You really put that on my nicely ironed tablecloth. Susie holds up one of the butter knives and stares Janice down. Don't you dare. Susie takes the butter knife and cuts open the box, which makes Janice cringe. You seriously have a problem. I just want at least something in my life perfect. You found it! Janice almost goes to the liquor cabinet and pours herself a glass of wine. I almost sent it to Goodwill, but I recognize dad's bad turkey drawn on the side. Janice puts a small case. Scott will be excited to try this out finally. Janice takes a well-loved carving knife out of the case. Still can't believe dad was aware enough to still not let your hubby touch his knife. He was very aware last year. Uh, whatever you say. Susie pulls out a VHS of White Christmas. I wonder how many more years we'll get out of this. These last for decades. It's been decades. Janice looks in the box one more time. Wow. Oh, hope you didn't find his Thanksgiving dentures. Those belong in a biohazard bag. Janice pulls out a Santa suit. Oh my gosh. I guess I forgot that was in there. I still wish we would have let him wear it. Oh, he never would have remembered. Janice, come on now. I'm not going to have you be all doom and gloom. He was very sick and it's better. You really think it's better he's gone? Janice puts the stuff back in the box and starts cleaning. I mean, well, you saw how he was. It was, he was like a shell of who he once was. At least he was here. Well, now he's in heaven with his motorcycle and probably fighting St. Peter for the turkey leg. Janice continues to clean. Janice. Jan! Susie sets the glass down and begins to escort Janice to the couch. No, wait! By the authority invested in me as your big sister, you shall relax. She's going to be here and I didn't even get to her bedroom. Oh, college gals love Phil. I mean, just look at the guy she brings home, <laughs> Phil. You are not bringing up anything about guys, sex, or love. Besides turkey, that's essentially Thanksgiving. You can't. It's too soon with everything that happened with Joel. I need to kick that girl in her pantyhose if she's boohooing over that wimp. It's been an entire year. Five months. Oh, it's time for that choo-choo to get her caboose a moving. What well, part of relaxing don't you get? I, I just need to clean. The only thing left to clean is the mop itself. There you go. Janice's phone chirps. Janice reads the text. But who died now? Kayla's bringing a friend. Who? I don't know. It just says, oh, I'm bringing a friend, too. Does it have a smiley face on it? Why? Well, th does it? Yes. <laughs> the gospel chain is coming. I just inherited a hand. Those wheels are moving. Yes, they are. I, it says a friend. It can't be. 
all those calls to relatives saying the wedding was canceled. No, it's too soon. Well, maybe for you, but. You didn't see us trying to get money back for the caterer and the reception hall. Then the issue with the honeymoon. Oh, I thought he bought that. He did. However, she had to authorize that her ticket could be transferred to a Miss Hannah Brown. Well, who the hell is Hannah Brown? She's, well, his new girlfriend. Oh, the skank? Oh, no, I'm about to go Donald J. Trump on his ass, that Weasley bastard. Susie takes out her phone from her bra. What are you doing? Still friends on Facebook, I think. Oh, please don't get involved again. Him up and it's done. It's over. Shoot, he blocked me. Trust me. It will be a long time before she trusts another guy again. I had a few guys cheat on me, but I made it so that they never cheat. <laughs> Not even on Monopoly. I got over it. Hell, I went out for drinks the week after we put Vance in the ground. She's not like you, thank God. There's better for her out there. I even told her, you got hurt because you haven't found that, that sexy knight in the most shiningest armor riding one of them big ass horses. She hasn't had time. Reporter for the Observer, she's writing her thesis. She's trying to find a job. And now she's back riding them horses. <laughs> Probably a roommate. Well, she has never brought home a roommate in, oh, unless it's a, a roommate. <laughs> oh, the last time she came home voluntarily was when we met John. Joel. And well, I rest my case. It was also when dad had the second stroke. Doesn't have that cover now. The front door opens. Scott enters carrying boxes of pizza. It's the most wonderful time of the year. With the big deals a coming and everyone busting down your store's front door. It's the most wonderful time of the year. What liquor have you been drinking? Black Friday, my dear sweet sister-in-law. The store is set and the employees have their instructions. Now I can enjoy our Thanksgiving with football, turkey and scott dips janice and kisses her my beautiful wife not in that order of course thought sure kayla would be here by now you got her text I haven't been on my phone at all she's bringing a friend the more the merrier i said even if it's a gentleman friend come on she would never bring home a guy without asking me or at least telling me well check your phone lord capulet Scott pulls out his phone. daddy -o, my friend Greg needed a place to go, so I'm bringing him. Peace, love, and turkey. I rest my case. Can't believe she would just... It's just... raining, man. Hallelujah. He just said she didn't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> That's a big old fat turkey lie. Susan, please. Okay, we get it. I need someone to fill me in on what's happened. She hasn't even hinted that she's seeing someone or at the very least going on dates. Yeah, she's busy. <laughs> Y'all about to see how busy she really is. No, come on. You guys saw how heartbroken she was. This is Kayla. Kayla, you know, first kiss in fifth grade, first boyfriend in sixth. Got a hick eater in halftime with the quarterback. Okay, stop. She's not going down that road right now. Just too many phone calls from her and crying. It, no, it's too soon. She knows better not to do this, especially after dad just died. Well, she didn't get the memo. It's a friend. She even said, a friend. Call her real quick. No. Yes. I'm not putting her on the spot. We're on the spot. I don't even know how to help you two. Susie takes her phone out of her bra. Let's try Facebook. No pictures with guys. Oh, let's search with Garrett. Greg. Oh, that little brat. She made it so I could only see our mutual friends. Why would she do that? Well, because she knows I'm nosy. <laughs> I don't think she'd post any picture on Instagram that's not on Facebook. Well, let's check her tweets. Wait. Oh, wow. She has a lot of tweets. Let's see. Aha, <laughs> gotcha. At Greg Smith 102 rolls with the punches. Hashtag faith. What does that mean? I couldn't tell you. 
So much for being the hip aunt. No, I'm the sassy aunt. Thank you very much. There's his profile picture. It's just a silhouette in the back of his head. Read us some of his tweets. No luck. He only retreats sports stories. What teams? She already has her daddy's approval. Search him on Facebook. Maybe he has more pictures or something. There's a million Greg Smiths out there. Greg Smith. Greg Smith. That name sounds familiar. You could probably find a Greg Smith in your yearbook. Scott goes upstairs. Susie gets her purse. You can't leave now. They'll be here at any minute. Need to get the pies for tomorrow before the store closes. But don't you fret now. I'll be back to fulfill my anti-duties tomorrow of sizing him up. Besides, you guys need some bonding time with at Greg Smith 102. <laughs> it's raining men, hallelujah. It's raining men, hallelujah, hallelujah. Susie exits. Janice pours some wine and drinks. Ah! A Genius on Wheels, Greg Smith by Kayla Stowe. I must have missed that one. It just came out in September. Read it. Greg Smith is known throughout the computer programming department as one of the rising stars. He has developed mobile apps for the disabled community, which he is a part of. A part of? A part of what? It's a disability community, which he is a part of. Oh, here it is. Cerebral palsy. There's a knock at the door. <gasps> Can't be them. Mommy dearest. No, 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 no. We need to find out what palsy or, or whatever it's called. Another knock at the door. One second. It's 30 degrees outside. I need to look it up. How do you spell? Scott goes to the door. Wait. Scott opens the door. Kayla is at the door. She's standing beside Greg. Greg is in a motorized wheelchair. Daddy. Kit Kat. Hey, babe. I want you to meet Greg Smith, my best friend and the greatest person I've ever met. Hey. It's great to meet you, buddy. We know so much about you. Oh, you actually read my stuff? You never miss an issue. That's so cool. You were in a magazine. Don't believe everything you read. It could be fake news. <laughs> oh, my bad. If you can't understand Gregus, just refer to me to translate in. I'll ask him to repeat. Or does say what? What was that? Perfect. The longer you're around me, the easier it is to get what I'm saying. The first time I met him, I thought he was speaking German. <laughs> Wow, I told you, Greg, you go all out for every holiday. And the table is already set. It's just, he doesn't make too big of a mess. Hey. <laughs> I was talking about my dad, not you. Oh, just do what you can. Okay, buddy? Ma, his name is... Greg, not Buddy. I know that. It's okay, people often come to you me for a lap dog. What? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can just talk normal to Greg. I was. Okay, hope you guys are ready for pizza. Yeah. I understood that. I'll just watch you guys eat. Come on, I paid extra for the stuffed crust. Mm, stomach. Had bad fish or something last night? Mm. Can I use your last room? Uh, West room? Restroom! 
picking it up fast, Dad. I'll show you where they are. Scott hurries and moves chairs and furniture to make a pathway for the wheelchair. Meanwhile, Greg parks his wheelchair and gets up and walks. I got it. Greg walks by Scott, which takes him off guard. Well, you walk. You just see my two step. <laughs> Greg does a little jig, and it makes it look like he might lose his balance. Janice and Scott go to catch him. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yo, don't be giving my parents a heart attack right after you meet them. Greg and Kayla exit through the kitchen. I can't believe she can understand him. Well, you can understand people from Scotland, and she can't. I wonder if it was an accident that cost his... Uh... I think it's called palsy or something. Or it could be like MS. I knew someone with MS, but it was more severe. Janice grabs her phone. Hand me the magazine so I can get the spelling. Let's just ask him. I want the whole picture of what this disability is. I'm pretty sure he can inform us better than some article. It also might be different for everyone. Janice sees the magazine. Scott tries to get to it, but Janice grabs it. Janice reads from the magazine and types in her phone. Cerebral palsy is a disorder of movement. They're in the net, they're, they're, in, the other, uh, they're in the other room. Muscle tone or posture that is caused by damage that occurs to the immature developing brain, most often before birth. People with cerebral palsy also may suffer reduced range of motion at various joints of their bodies due to muscle stiffness. So his body doesn't work, go oh, well. You seem very calm about this. Sounds like your dad stroked. His body wasn't working, but his brain kept going. Some people show normal or near normal intellectual capacity, but others may have intellectual disabilities. Epilepsy, blindness, or deafness also may be present. He isn't blind. He heard everything we said. I'll ask him before we get out the strobe light. Intellectual disabilities. She had plenty of friends like this in elementary. We had those special ed kids on the field trip, and Kayla was right there pushing them and talking to them. The summer she worked at the store, we had a guy who had some struggles, and Kayla was right there helping him do stuff. She wasn't dating them. Whoa, whoa, hold up here. She isn't dating anyone. The greatest person I've ever met? That means nothing. She gave him the look. What look? The look, you know. Stop that. I'm telling you, women have a look for guys they like. She said they're best friends. Exactly. Girls call everyone their best friends. Plus, she wouldn't keep that from us. <laughs> I'm going to quote you in a day or two. Quote away. Kayla enters. Is he OK in there? Made sure he had a plunger. Uh, I mean, uh, can he? I think what your mom is asking. Uh, did I? OK, ew, his mom potty trained him. Well, we just, uh, we were just caught a little off guard. Well, I told dad. I even asked. You know I don't check my phone the week of Black Friday. We just wanted to be prepared. Like, well, I could have made bigger spaces in the house for his chair. That chair is just for making a path during Black Friday. We still would have liked to have known. Greg enters. Still talking about me, I see. Don't be surprised. I'll grab the pizza. And a lot of napkins. Scott exits through the kitchen. When I met Kayla and we ate for the first time I said I <laughs> need napkins like people need pants. <laughs> I told him that my mom would approve of that statement. I can't control what life throws at me, but I can clean my home. I'm trying not to make a mess. That's why we have vacuums. Scott enters carrying the pizza boxes and napkins. Dig in. Could you put it in my hand? I got you. Kayla puts the pizza in the palm of Greg's hand. Can't believe you're turning down a slice of your favorite pizza. 
I could fix you something else. No, I'm seriously good. Hope that appetite of yours gets back in time for dinner tomorrow. You and me both. So, Greg, where are you from? Outside of Orlando. Orlando? The family still there? Most of my siblings are all over the country. Say that one more time. My parents are, but my siblings are not. Helping falls off of Greg's pizza. Janice reaches down, picks them up, and places them in her napkin. You have siblings? You're doing it again. I'm not doing anything. Yeah, talking slow-mo. Sweetie, you are. Don't worry. I have six. Wow, any complications or? They don't have CP, if that's what you're asking. CP? Nickname for cerebral palsy. More toppings fall off of Greg's pizza. Janice picks them up and places them in her napkin. Mom? Where do you live in South Bend? A new complex campus. Does your roommate have any difficulties too? Greg has lived on his own for 10 years. Must be on a good meal service then. Yes, called Taco Bell. I didn't get that. He has the same meal plan as every college boy. <laughs> he eats out a lot. Oh, that's pricey. Oh, he has money to spend. Hey, oh, there's nothing to be ashamed of of having some financial help. We try to open our pockets and give to this or that charity. <laughs> he has a full ride with the stipend. That's awesome. Kind of a genius. Stop. I just I'm messing with the computer. Well, he has a grant too. <laughs> Making more money than me. Before we go any farther, if you have any questions about my disability, you can ask. You got it at birth? Scott. You just said if we had questions, and we did. It's okay. Yes, I did. I saw some home videos of when Greg was seven, and he couldn't even walk. Did you do physical therapy or something? That and my older brother played football, so I tried playing too. He's now helping with the football team. Oh, you're helping the team? My dad might be jealous. He snuck me on the field a few times. Kayla told me you coached. Couch? Coached. <laughs> Long time ago. Now I just sell stuff to coaches. <laughs> he runs that sporting goods store I told you about. Oh, yeah. Well, when did you start it? When did I start? Oh, start it. Oh, oh I did. Uh, Janice's dad did. Papa O started. That took over after the stroke. I'm sorry for your loss. I wish I could have met him. Janice he was confused. He said he's sorry for your loss and he wishes he could have met Papa O. I bet you see Joel at the games. Honey? I know he liked going. No, I haven't seen or talked to him. What about that Sean fella you're always with? We were in a study group. 
Seems like he liked you. I think his wife wouldn't approve of us. Greg is almost done with his pizza. He goes to take a bite and several toppings fall. I'm so sorry. Janice gets on the floor and picks up the crumbs. Then she puts napkins all around Greg's chair. Janice, that can wait till when we're done. Trying to stop the cockroach, Vegas buffet. Mom! It's okay, I'm done anyway. Janice gets up. I heard you are very active. Active? No, no, that's Scott. He's the sports guy. You met in the community. Oh, that. I need to keep busy as an empty nester. What organization do you help? Or what? organizations well i help with blood drives toy drives and any other drives out there i just heard of a new group that is called best buddies i think they do outings and activities with adults with the challenges i bet you've been associated with groups like that no i have We can clear the plates. We got it. Family roll. Kids clean up dinner. Kayla and Greg gather the plates and exit to the kitchen. Babe? I clean up everything. You brought up Joel. You always liked him. Not after he broke her heart. You have to stop this snooping around. Just seeing what my daughter has been up to because frankly, she hasn't been communicating. She doesn't have a fling with every guy she says hi to. She brought him home. Because he probably didn't want to buy a ticket to Florida. Are you saying that out of six adult siblings, we who are living in North Carolina are closer than any other sibling of his who would probably love to have had him? If we are, then he still decided at the very last minute to drive nine plus hours to Asheville to spend Thanksgiving with a female friend and her parents. It doesn't add up. You need to breathe and relax. I'm gonna ask them. Janice. You can't. Uh, you bet I will. It will be awkward for Greg if they're not. He might not even date or have those kinds of relationships. We need to find out somehow. I got it. Scott runs to the window next to the kitchen door and opens it slightly. Kit Kat, come here a sec. Kayla, Kayla enters. Yeah? Uh, we need to grab a few things from the store for tomorrow. We do? Uh, for my dip, for the games. Oh, uh, yeah, we do need to go. Okay, uh, we should be an hour or so. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Kayla exits through the kitchen. Scott runs out of the house, followed by Janice. Scott and Janice sneak to the window. You want to spy on them. The biggest temptation for a young hormonal couple is an empty house. I do not want to see them get it on. No, I'm going to show you that they won't fall into temptation because they're just friends. Kayla and Greg enter the living room. I'm not. Shh. I need a drink. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay, best buddy. They're trying to figure me out. Well, I know you're a complex child of the 90s, but so am I. Kayla sits on the couch and Greg sits right by her. Look how close they're sitting. Dude, I need space. Kayla scoots away from Greg. See? Talk to me, cat, cat. Call me that and I'll cinder block your wheelchair. Is that because you have so many break up? No. I thought it was. She loved Kit Kats.
Being here is just overwhelming. Why? Home is where the heart is, but it's also where your parents are. God can be honest with them. Well, I'm half tempted to just leave now and meet your parents at Disney World. You have to stop worrying. I'll get it from my mom. I don't worry. You do, huh? I'm your wingman. And my best friend. There you go. Best friends. Kayla and Greg hug. Oh, boy. It's a hug. Kayla and Greg look into each other's eyes. And the look. You're my best one, two. Kit Kat. Kayla pushes Greg onto the couch, and she runs and jumps into Greg's wheelchair. Greg jumps up. Well, Kit Kat this. Don't. Kayla drives around the living room while Greg chases her. If she runs into something. Better than canoodling. Let's go get a dessert or something for tonight. Scott gets up to leave. Greg corners Kayla and Kayla pulls Greg in her lap. Janice pulls Scott back down. God, God. <laughs> who caught who? Kayla and Greg start kissing. Uh-oh. What did you say about how she would tell us? We can't do anything. Janice gets up and runs back to the front door. Rash. Scott follows. Kayla and Greg stop kissing. Kayla helps, pushes Greg off of her. Janice storms in. Um, you're back early. Scott follows. Um, wasn't worth the traffic. So, what are you guys up to? Grand Theft Auto. I'm winning. Scott, let's make some hot chocolate and we can just chill and chat. We're out of milk. You use water. Well, we can grab some. No, <sighs> it's late. It's 6.30. You don't want to be in the traffic. I actually need to pick up a prescription. A what? That's right. We need to go anyway to fill to refill his prescription. You forgot your meds? Well, we left in a hurry. What are they for? If you don't mind my asking. Um, babe, is that really our business? Some prescriptions need certain foods to take with them. I want to make sure we have whatever he needs. What are they called? Nixon. N-I-K-Z-O-N. Need anything else while we're out? Uh, chips and hot salsa. Guacamole? Yep. Kayla bends down with her back to Greg. Hop on. Greg hops on Kayla's back and they exit. Google knocks on. This isn't any of our business. We need to know what exactly he has. Seizures? ADHD? Depression? Scott gets out his phone and types. Well? Hemorrhoids. Blackout. End of scene one. Scene two. Good night, Greg. Night. The lights are dimmed in the living room. The front door opens and Kayla and Greg enter. Kayla's carrying grocery bags and sets them down on the couch. Let me call you Gregory. I'm in love with you. Let Gregory whisper that Greg loves me too. Love you. Greg and Kayla laugh and kiss as they dance. Kit Kat? Greg and Kayla separate and Scott comes down the stairs. Scott is in pajamas and a bathrobe. Shh, mom's sleeping. Sorry. You slept through many Super Bowl parties. We're good. Still on college standard time? 1 a.m. always feels good. You get to see our neck of the woods a little? Yeah, until Kayla and Scott. Lost. Lost? I was just admiring the Thanksgiving Scrooges and their Christmas lights. Pretty soon Santa will take over trick-or-treating. 
We also went to all my old stomping grounds, shopped, ate something finally. Oh, I'm glad your stomach thing went away. For now, never going to have Wendy's again. I thought you said it was seafood. I honestly don't even remember. We stopped at so many food places on our way here. Well, we have some guest rooms upstairs or we could pull out the sofa sleeper. Still there me also, still no quiet family public. We hate each other. So for sleeper it is. Can I use that shower down here? Cleanse away. I'll put these away. Greg grabs the groceries while Kayla gets his pajamas from a duffel that's behind the couch. Kayla hands Greg the pajamas and he heads towards the kitchen. Don't slip. I have crappy insurance. Greg exits. I'm proud of you. Not a lot of people have the guts to joke with Greg. He taught me that's how he knows that people get him. I have to give my daughter's boyfriend a hard time. He's not. I mean, cat's out of the bag. I, how? I was going to tell you guys, I swear it. So you're just going to keep lying to us? No, I, I just didn't want to spring it on you and just ease you into it. Thought it would be better if we waited till you could meet him in person. <laughs> Man, you better have a better alibi than that for mom. <sighs> of course you found out. She knew the moment you got here. I think she was in her voodoo mode. Ah, oh, well, I stepped in it this time. Or in Greg's case, wheeled in it. Come on, let's pull out the bed. Kayla and Scott pull out the sofa sleeper as they talk. Oh, it's jarring sometimes to meet Greg. When I first sat down to interview him, I mean, I, I saw him on campus, but that first few minutes was so weird. It was like, E.T. phone home. Dad. You said he likes to be teased. I mean, it took me a day or two to just see oh, how beautiful he is. Instead, you just let us meet him and, oh, I'm dating him. Talk about a one-two punch. Oh, you got to see him. What he could do, though. I mean, he does his classes. Oh, and he started being a T.A., and he just tries to make every day matter. You kept saying I needed a guy to sweep me off my feet. Well, he did and more. With Papa dying and mom dealing with that, I didn't know how to tell you guys. Then tell us, call me. You know how much I love procrastinating at work. <laughs> He's different though. Good and just different. Baby. I could care less if he has CP, MS, blind, deaf, or if he's a Patriots fan. Mom does. Asking about if he gets help from charities. She's just trying to wrap her head around this whole thing. She's already trying to get through this weekend without Papa. That isn't that fair to Greg. You're right. I guess what I'm trying to say is you got to let us breathe a little. I mean, Jeez, Kayla, we were paying for a wedding a year ago, and now you bring home a different guy that you have gaga eyes for? I wasn't planning on finding Greg. I know, I know. Love happens. You didn't even tell us you were dating again, let alone seeing anyone. It's, it's not about the disability. That doesn't matter. Having cerebral palsy doesn't stamp your ticket to heaven. Greg could be a jerk or a con. I don't know. Just got to remind us to buckle up when you take us on one of your crazy rides. By this point, they're sitting on the sofa sleeper. Janice walks down the stairs in pajamas and a bathrobe. Scott? With Juliet. You guys need any food? We're good. You can always microwave some leftovers. And we have some cookies in the jar from Miss Kenny. Okay. Hey, Mom? I know, you know, and I'm sorry I didn't tell you. No what? About Greg. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Oh, I got some extra blankets on your bed in case you need them. 
I'll use the ones down here in the closet. Will Greg need them? We'll share. Share? I'm sleeping down here with this teddy bear. No, you're not. Well, it's not like that. I'm sorry, but this is not negotiable. I think what your mom is trying to say is uh, we just don't feel comfortable with this. He, he needs help at night, though. Uh, oh. Well, not having you trip and die going to the bathroom on my watch. Scott could sleep in the recliner. Mom, you got to trust me on this? I did. I'm going to be back. Silly, don't you have a nightlight? Nightlight? Oh, yeah, we do, just by the door, and we can keep the kitchen light on, too. See? Don't die on this hill. Come on. I'll even pull out your favorite quilt. Hey, I love you. Greg gives Kayla a kiss on the cheek. We can face time. Kayla grabs the duffel bag and runs upstairs. Janice follows. Sorry about that. Greg, this is round 99 of an eternal boxing match. Thank you for being flexible. I get that. If you need anything, are you not, Kayla? And keep the Thanksgiving Eve peace. Scott exits upstairs. Greg looks around and moves a few chairs to make a clear pathway from the sofa sleeper to the kitchen. Greg gets into bed and gets his phone out and FaceTimes Kayla, but there's no answer. He turns over and tries to sleep. A few moments later, Kayla, now in her pajamas, sneaks downstairs and tiptoes into bed with Greg. Hey. Greg doesn't budge, and Kayla gives him a kiss. Kayla! Sorry I didn't answer the call. Thought we could have some actual FaceTime. We, we can't. Oh, you seriously thought I wanted to get it on in my parents' living room? No, I, I, I know that, I mean, we told you. Yours. Every other boyfriend, they let us share a room. Well, every other boyfriend you had compassion, sobriety test. That's debatable. Just going to sleep, that's all. Kayla snuggles into bed. Look. You're really going to listen to them. I hope you want me to. We need this weekend to go perfect, babe, and finally we've been striking out. Because they won't even let you bat. Maybe we can think of a little sleeping around the arrangements tomorrow. They won't go for it. Well, then let's play by the rules. You know, you really do need help navigating to the bathroom. I'll be using that. Excuse me, it will make my life easier. Mm, and stop yapping and start napping. But you have to try to be out of here before they wake up. Kayla grabs Greg's phone. Set an alarm and we are good to go for Operation Sleepover. Kayla Chris's gay Greg and moves to the other side of the bed. They fall asleep. After a few moments, Kayla turns over and snuggles up to Greg. 
Moments later, Scott walks down the stairs and searches for something. Oh, it has to be here somewhere. Ooh, suddenly Scott turns to the sofa sleeper and sees Kayla and Greg snuggling. Kit Kat? Kayla? Greg? Neither Kayla nor Greg move. Scott thinks and goes to the lamp and turns it on. Kayla snuggles closer to Greg. Scott panics, goes to his recliner, and turns on the TV. Greg and Kayla don't budge. Just want to watch the highlights? Kayla and Greg aren't responsive as they snuggle tighter. Scott goes to the side of the bed where Kayla is and nudges her shoulder. Sweetheart? As Scott nudges Kayla, she turns her back but remains asleep. Scott hesitates and thinks. He then grabs Kayla's hand and gently tugs it. He makes sure she doesn't wake up, and then he gives her another tug and pulls her away from Greg. Scott goes to the other side of the sofa sleeper and does the same thing with Greg until he's closer to the side. By the end, there should be a sizable gap between Kayla and Greg. Satisfied, Scott sits back down in the recliner. When Scott is situated and comfortable, Kayla and Greg both turn to the center and start snuggling again. <laughs> Joke's on me. Good one, guys. Kayla and Greg are guys? St still sound asleep. Scott gets up and pulls Kayla away from Greg like before. As he gets Kayla to the side, she begins to roll over back to Greg. Scott pulls Kayla back, grabs a cushion that was on the couch before it became a sofa sleeper, and he puts the cushion in between them, but they're still gravitating to each other. Scott goes back to the couch. With one hand on the cushion besides Kayla, he rolls Greg to the side and puts another cushion by Greg. Leaning over the back of the couch, he tips over onto the bed, ah, doing a somersault. He's stuck in between the two cushions and Kayla and Greg. Perfect. Scott tries moving, but Kayla and Greg are squeezing the cushions against Scott. He gives up with a sigh. He lays there watching TV, but begins nodding off. Scott falls asleep and begins to snore. Scott snoring is so loud, it wakes up Kayla and Greg, and they notice the bed set up. What the? Scott snoring gets louder. Kayla begins to shake Scott's shoulder. Dad. Dad. He is asleep like you. After a few seconds, Kayla gets out of bed, turns off the TV, and goes over to Greg. Kayla squats down with her back turned to Greg. Hop on. What are we? Out of the bear cave. But then I... How many times do you actually go to the bathroom in the night? Well... None. What about not? Um, well, either sleeping with my dad or me. You choose. Greg gets in Kayla's back and she gives him a piggyback ride up the stairs. Blackout. End of scene two. Scene three. Thanksgiving with Greg. Late morning. Scott is asleep and snoring on the couch. Janice in her pajamas with an apron on walks down the stairs. She sees Scott alone on the sofa sleeper. Scott. Scott. Scott jolts out of bed. Look, Notre Dame has scored a touchdown. Rally sons of Notre Dame. He needed you in the night? Not necessarily. I don't understand. Okay, don't freak out. She came back down here? Nothing happened. You confident about that assumption? Unless they went back at, oh boy. Her bedroom door was closed. Oh, boy. Janice. Janice begins heading to the stairs. Janice. We set down strict rules. And she's an adult. And she's my daughter. Greg enters from the kitchen carrying a bowl of oatmeal. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, same to you. Janice watches nervously as Greg walks with the bowl. Let me help you. Janice walks over to Greg and takes the bowl from him. Hope you don't mind that I made that. Hope mind? I, we don't mind at all. Hardly touch that stuff anyway. Are you going to need any help? I got it. You must have snuck into the kitchen right up after I left. I didn't touch anything. I'm going to get ready. Scott runs upstairs. Ah. 
What? Why don't you stay down here with us? You need to shower before the festivities start. Scott exits. I'm going to put the bed away. I'll just be uh, over here. Look, I'm sorry about. Look about? No. I'm sorry about last night with Kayla. Oh, okay. I know this is hard. Kayla will hopefully be down soon and we can talk then. Pause. I love Kayla and we're never hard, hard. Janice doesn't respond as she finishes putting the couch back together. Kayla comes down the stairs dressed. Happy Turkey Day. Kayla comes down and hugs Janice. I'm grateful for you. Kayla goes and kisses Bray. And you. How's dinner coming? It'll be ready shortly. Oatmeal, you healthy pig. You bet. Where's mine? Oh, you were sleeping. Well, I'm up now. Oatmeal coming up. Yeah, he doesn't have to make you breakfast. We're going to eat in an hour or so. I do work all the time. Best oatmeal chef I've ever seen. Plus, I'm starved. Brick exits to the kitchen. Why do you make them do that? Well, I make dinner, he makes breakfast, and we're usually out for lunch. He cooks? Yep, oatmeal, oatmeal, and oatmeal. You go to his place every morning? More or less. So last night was just another night for you. Nothing happened. But something does happen when you're not here. We're dating, mom. It's a common thing couples do and it, he's not the first guy I've been with. But you've never been with a guy like Greg. Well, disabled people have sex too. Okay, okay, did not want to hear that. Well, you brought it up. Kayla, I'm just trying to get through today. Not as lively without Papa. This past summer has been rough. It was all I could do to just get up in the mornings. Papa or breaking up with Joel? Both. But I found my pick-me-up. I, I really do think it's neat you're hanging out with Greg. I can tell you're happy. Mm, for the first time, I feel like my old self, you know, not moping or staying in bed all day, having a Gilmore Girls Marathon. Mm, I've been waiting for that. You just have so much to give to people. Well, I want to give it all to Greg sometimes. Well, keep Greg around then, but you should keep your options open still. Ma. I'm dating Greg. I know, I know, but that doesn't mean you can't say yes to another guy. Greg is the guy. You mean like Joel, Henry, Nick? I get what you're saying, but it's different. You just need to be careful this time around. Maybe lay off kissing and the physical stuff until you're really for sure this is it. Trust me. He's my sexy knight in the most shiniest armor riding on a big ass horse. I mean, he actually does have a horse. Halo points to Greg's wheelchair. Crap, she is like Susan. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Well, what if something happens, though? I'm not saying break up. But what if you get a job in New York or, uh, I don't know. I drag him along. 
I know you adore him, but he'll be heartbroken if you two couldn't be together. Well, that will not happen. Life happens, Kayla, and you can't control it. You might say that now, but what about tomorrow, a year from now? You, you have to prepare for the worst. Well, if I get a broken heart at the end of this, good, means I went all in. Dating him is the most serious thing you've ever done. This is Greg, his family, his hopes and dreams that he won't live alone or need to be in an assisted living place. This is more than playing with a guy's heart. This, his whole life is in this. And I want to be a part of it. Come what may. And love it. There's a crashing sound from the kitchen. Greg enters. You're not a catch to the Disney ball. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. Chill, people. It's a bowl. I can, uh... Mother, you're in your pajamas still, and we can finish up the turkey and stuff. Greg, you need to eat so we can start dinner soon. Okay? Okay, break. Kayla exits to the kitchen. Janice hesitates and then starts heading upstairs. I'm sorry. It's fine. Janice exits upstairs. Greg sits down and eats. After a few moments, Susie enters from the front door. Susie is dressed up a little and carrying pies and a small cooler. Eyes are here and so is my stomach. Oh, hello, Ollie. Janice didn't tell me she was helping with that group home again. It's nice to meet you. No, I'm going, Kayla. That's nice, dear. Are, are you ready for some turkey, turkey, turkey? <laughs> yes. I'm Caleb's boy. Will be so good. I hope he can eat it. I can. Oh, look. Oatmeal. Well, that sure looks good. Is someone helping you eat it? I don't need it. Wonder where Kayla is with that, that Greg fellow. It's me. Oh, oh, you want a bite? Susie picks up the spoon and scoops some oatmeal. No, I'm. Say well, here comes the Thanksgiving Express. Chugga chugga. Woo woo. It's okay. Susie forces the spoon in Greg's mouth. <laughs> there we go. Where is my southern charm? I, I, I never asked your name. Greg. Craig. Oh, it's very nice to meet you. I, I'm Susan, but you can call me Aunt Susie. No. Greg. That, that's right. We have a Greg and a Craig here for Thanksgiving. I am Greg. Oh, what, 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 what is that smell? I, I wonder if they left adult diapers for Craig. Kayla. Yeah. Help. Kayla enters from the kitchen with an apron on. What is Kayla? She runs over to Kayla and embraces her. Aunt Susie! What on earth have you been doing away from us? Feels like you just forgot about Asheville. Oh, how on earth can I forget my favorite aunt in the world? Stop it. I already left everything to you in the will. Just making sure. Now, my dear, where is this Greg? I have to meet him. I think you have. Indeed, I have, child. All those years of telling me how you'll meet this hunk of a man with charms and brains and a nice tush. I did. Is he in the kitchen slaving away? He's right here. Susie looks around the room. Hello, Craig. Craig? No, it's Greg. Oh, oh so there are two Gregs. Jeez, I hope not. That would be terrifying. Hey. <laughs> but it would make the world much better. I'm, I'm not following. And Susie, meet Greg Smith, my boyfriend. Uh oh, I see, your boyfriend. <laughs> oh, well, 
I am his new girlfriend who's coming to steal him away from you. Uh-huh. I'll play this game too. And Susie. Just leave this to me. So so leave it so me and my new boyfriend can be alone. I'm not playing. Oh, Kit Kat, you're so generous to bring him. Most gals bring home guys they're sleeping with, but you are so much better than that. And oh. Susan! Listen, this really is my boyfriend. So holy pills. Uh, Kayla gets out her phone. See? Here's us at the Notre, Notre Dame games. Painting the helmets gold? You, you go above and beyond. I am just so proud of you. <laughs> Susie hugs Kayla. Scott and Janice enter from upstairs. Happy Thanksgiving to my daughter, sister-in-law, and daughter's boyfriend. Oh, no. He is my boyfriend now. What? In denial. You tell him, babe. Explain to Aunt Susie this isn't a game. What game? You know. The, the game where Greg has a girlfriend. Ah, okay. I get it. I'm confused. Susie thinks Greg is like a best buddy and we're pretending with him. Oh, boy. Kayla, Greg, we have serving duty. Greg, get your chair and we'll load up food on your lap. Greg gets in his wheelchair. I'll be right here waiting for you. Scott grabs the pies. They exit to the kitchen. What an awesome thing Kayla is doing. I mean, this is better than moving on and dating. I mean, wow. Susan. Have, have you guys opened a bottle yet? No, but. Good. Susie goes up to the cooler by the door and pulls out a bottle of wine. I decided to splurge a bit, mostly because I thought Greg was her new fling and I wanted to give him the, the Aunt Susie welcome. Janice goes over to the small cupboard by the dining table and pulls out wine glasses. Susan. Susan pours the wine and carries the glasses to Janice. This is just as special. I toast to Kayla, the most generous woman of her generation. Susan, listen to me. Kayla is dating Greg. Greg has cerebral palsy, which affects his body and his speech. He's a computer programmer, and Kayla wrote an article on him. Now, I think they're living together. Susie pauses and takes a big drink of wine. Is she out of her damn mind? Susie. You're letting her do this? I didn't let her. What the hell did dad put us through? I, I, mean, I mean, of course, you weren't there like I was. I was. So don't you go there again. Well, then you know full well how ludicrous this is. I mean, her generation is smoking weed and making everything legal nowadays. This isn't like that. You're okay with this, I see. I'm as shocked as you are, but I'm still trying to figure this out. So while you do that, she'll keep pretending that this is normal. I've told her this isn't like her other guys. Lordy, this ain't even close. She has so much ahead of her and I, I feel like this is deja vu. Greg isn't dad. You have no idea what this is. I'm sure she's button, buttering you up, putting rose-colored glasses on you and Scott. This is not what you want her to deal with, Janice. As good as she's trying to be, that this has to be stopped. We've expressed our concerns. And here a dad did to me. Seriously, look. You nag me about my drinking? Well, I need it after the crap I've seen. Kayla needs us now. Greg, Kayla, and Scott enter from the kitchen. Kayla is carrying a dish, Greg is holding a dish on his lap, and Scott is carrying the turkey. Dinner is served. Yes, my favorite moment has arrived. They set the dishes on the table and they sit around the table. Shall we say grace? I'll do it. They all hold hands. Oh dear Jesus, uh, we come before you as a family and we know that you brought us together this day. We pray that our family may be united and recognize correctness and righteousness. Let common sense be our guide and let you guide us back to our correct paths. Help those of, those of us who are afflicted that they may be healed and, and get them the help they need. But let us listen to each other and recognize the truth when it's been told, amen. Never took you as the religious type. 
Well, after going through the trenches with Papa O, even I have to lean on the big man upstairs. Do you want everything? Yeah. Well, make sure you really cut it. Uh, I, I remember the hospice care nurses told me that people like them, like Papa and Greg, they have a tough time chewing. I don't have You choked on us, huh? I just saw on the news that a number one killer of people with handicaps is choking to death. Where did you see that? Oh, I don't know. I just turn on the TV and they, I have a play in the background. He's never choked since I've known him. Even before that. Well, it, it must have been all the helpers you've had. Hmm? Always there to cut your food and watch you. I had to make sure Papa's meals were always cut. I bet you remember that, Janice. Oh, I don't recall. Oh, I, I forgot I did that all by myself. But thank the Lord Jesus for Papa's health insurance and getting that care. We took him food all the time and Papa ate fine. Well, it must have been early on then because the, when the second stroke hit, it was, it was luck that he didn't need a feeding tube. A stroke and CPR. Very different. Well, not sure about that because I read CP is a stroke at birth. Greg isn't regressing like Papa was. Well, getting older does weird things to your body. You'll cross that bridge when you get there. We will. I bet you're already job hunting now since graduation's coming up so quickly. Oh, I've been busy with school and social stuff. Oh, you're, you're getting distracted. I mean, I don't blame you. When I took care of Papa. We, we took care of him. Sure, sis. I just want to make sure you get all the time you need up there with Diane Sawyer. Oh, Baba Wawa. That's right, Baba Wawa. I think you can have a life, though. I mean, my life can't be just work. Exactly. I would go crazy if I did nothing but the store. Well, hopefully a, a Greg doesn't ask you to help him get around everywhere. I felt like I was writing the sequel to Driving Miss Daisy, driving Papa to all his appointments and his therapies. I drove him too. Well, of co course you did. You were big help every Tuesday and second Friday. He's very independent, actually. We joke that he could be the post child for the South Bend public transportation. And that my Lamborghini. He gets around quicker than me. Sounds like I need one of those. I do. And well, what about commuting? I mean, if he lives in the suburbs, it might be tough. Oh, his chair can actually fit in my rogue if we put the seats down and lean the back of the wheelchair down. Plus, I use Uber and Lyft. Oh, yeah. Uber and Lyft are so convenient. I tried that, and it's not that bad a price. I'll try paying one for every day to and from work. It, it would bankrupt you. Well, not if you're making six figures like Greg will. <sighs> Computer programmers make bank. As long as they can work, that is. I love work. I do. So I don't see that stop. Me. That's exactly what my father said, but look what happened to him. He died alone in this house and he couldn't wipe his own ass. Will you stop? I'm just sharing my experience with Papa. There, that has nothing to do with Greg. Calm down. Susan, Greg is a resident expert. Let's ask him. Greg, are you regressing? No. Are you worried about transportation? No. Let's just sit and enjoy our meal, okay? Greg takes a bite of turkey, and after a few seconds, he begins <coughs> coughing hard. Is <coughs> okay? Greg keeps coughing, and he gasps for air, spitting out the turkey. See? You gotta watch him when he eats. That was the first time you've ever done that. Only takes one time if you're not with him. Who knows how soon a dad would have left us if I hadn't moved in. We would have stepped in. Oh, and have Papa sleep on the sofa sleeper? Because he sure wouldn't do the stairs. In fact, it's sad it's not being able to see him do it. It's sad to see him not being able to do a lot. It, it must be hard on you not to do stuff you love, Kayla, like well, hiking and running. And I still do all of that, Aunt Susie. Then who watches Greg so he doesn't choke? 
Round well, Greg actually does repelling, biking, and we have found he can do almost everything I can. In fact, Dad, I think it's time for our running charades. You're absolutely right. I did that. Oh, it's just the number one Thanksgiving game ever. Papa O made it up because he was worried that he'd gained too much weight after he ate Thanksgiving dinner. I think it's appropriate, despite everything. Come on, Papa would want us to honor him by playing. Can we clear the plates first? And leave until after. I really think we should clean first. Janice, don't be... Scott, please. <sighs> okay, old people clean up. Kayla, Greg, no canoodling. Scott, Janice, and Susie gather the plates of food and then exit to the kitchen. I can't believe you're not defending yourself. I don't want to give Harvey Ben of Ben of getting out fired up. It's not worth it. It is to me. My mom is buying every word on Susie says. I hardly doubt that. You don't know my mom. But I know the daughter she was. We just let them get used to me. And if they don't? Trust me. You need to fight for this. Janice, Scott, and Susie enter. Scott has a box of cards. I'm playing, you're playing. Watching. Just because you always come in last. I do not. Kind of do. Wait, Greg's playing? Sure he is. It's very complicated and get overwhelming. Papa couldn't play for years. Because you never let him play. I'll be okay. So we all remember the rules. When you're up, you choose who you want to act out the cards as you run around the house. More cards people get right, the worse you do. It's like golf, lowest score wins. Let's have two veterans show them how it's done. Susie, will you act as I run? Very well, you, you forget I have Shakespearean actor training. I know, Shakespearean actors need five acts to tell a story. Scott opens the front door and lines up as if you were going to run a race. Ready? Born ready. Go! Scott takes off running. Uh, bird. Chicken. Turkey. Turkey. Susie nods and takes the next card. Person. Elvis Presley. Susie nods and takes the next card. Scott enters out of breath. Time. Cheated. How many did I get? Two. Ah, who's the champ? Enjoy while it lasts. Who's up? I'll go. Woo! Go, Kayla. Whoop your dad's smart ass. Greg, you're acting. You're right. on. You, you really think he knows what the words are? Indubitably. What was that? Play the game. Skunker, you flip me. Yep. Scott sits by the cards, ready to show them to Greg. Be stuck in the deck for him. I don't need a stack. Oh, it is a good thing we are not playing telephone. Ready? Kayla lines up by the door. Go. Kayla takes off. Scott holds up a card so only Greg can see it. Person. It's Dracula. Greg nods. Person. A boxer. Rocky? Greg nods. Scott shows him another card. Person. Uh, uh, you? Four scum. Kayla runs in. Yes! How many? Three. Ooh. Booyah! 
you should just pantomime all the time. It's so much easier to understand you. I'm fine with that. Guess he is better than you, Susan. Well, I had harder words. Okay, Janice, you're up. No, my food is still digesting. Uh, and Susie then. Oh, a lady does not run. Greg can go. Oh, I, I don't think that would be safe, huh? Yeah, I'll go for it. You could take the wheelchair. Please, I don't need any handicaps in this game. Oh, fine words. Pick someone to act. Jan. Me? I'm no good at it. I think he knows that. If you're not running, at least you can act. Shouldn't we follow him in, in case so he doesn't get lost? Don't worry. I'm an Eagle Scout. Ear out. Eagle Scout, let's focus. Janice stands up and Greg goes by the door. Ready? Game on. Go. Greg takes off running. His run is slower and floppy. Janice picks up a card. Book. Story. That's it. No talking. Janice picks up another card. Person. Frog. Rabbit. Bugs Bunny. Janice Heaven. nods. She draws another card. Heaven. Ceiling. Uh, roof. Janice nods and takes another card. Hurry up, loser. A person. Uh, detective. Sherlock Holmes. Wow, I'm good. No talking. Right. Get lost out there? Let it go remind him we're inside. People, people like that forget things. Janice draws another card. Kayla exits through the front door. A person. Babe? Dad! Scott runs outside. Blackout. End of scene three. Scene four, talking with Greg. Evening, Greg is laying out on the couch. Kayla is sitting by him and Scott is checking his ankle. Susie and Janice are in the corner looking on. It's just one bad sprain. Killing. Yeah. It would have been one if I would have won. I'll get ice. Kayla, maybe go up to my office. I have a box of sports stuff from the store. I should have some compression wrap. Scott exits the kitchen and Kayla exits up the stairs. Finally going to say something? I've got nothing. But you know this is a circus. He fell. It's just the beginning. First he choked, now he fell. I don't usually do any of those things. This is all how it started before Dad started going downhill. I know that, Susan. You must like reruns or remakes of old classic because I sure as hell don't want Kaylee to go through what I did. We both went through it, okay? So stop saying it was all you. I call it like I see it. And I saw plenty of excuses for not coming out more. Hate me for having a husband and a daughter who needed me too. Of course, you want, you want to claim you were busy, but we both know you were scared just like now. Scott enters with a bag of ice. Here we go. Scott goes over to Greg and sets the ice on Greg's ankle. But Scott agrees. With what? Being honest with her. About? G-R-E-G. -E I can understand you. Look what happened when we didn't step in with Joel. I am not Joel. Greg's right. We can't stop another heartbreak. We can stop another heartbreak. We can be the ones that she looks back 50 years from now and she will have thanked us. You know, I, I'm convinced that what I went through that with dad for this moment. I went through that too. If you did, then you would be right here next to me putting your foot down. Enough. 
Kayla enters from upstairs. I think I found. Please prepare yourself. Kayla Marie. Kayla hands Scott a roll of compression tape. Kayla Marie, your mother and I have. Stop speaking for me, please. I know what you're saying. But Kayla needs to know we don't approve. Hold up. We never said we don't approve. You're moving too fast. Exactly. You're caught up in this romantic illusion without seeing reality. I never said. You're, you are only seeing what's hard. What well, feels like I'm the only one. <laughs> I never said this would be easy. Even he knows. Yeah, I wish I could be the one picked up on dates or not have to button his shirts, but it's so worth it. I dated, I, I've been with guys, but Greg, I don't see the wheelchair or motor skills. I don't hear the slurred words sometimes. I just see Greg and he knows I do. It's, it's all worth it to be his lover. Lover, oh my God. Oh, you've slept with men more disabled than he'll ever be. Kayla. Truth is, I am 20 days late on my period and I couldn't be happier. You're serious. Kayla goes over to her purse and pulls out ultrasound pictures. You're, you're, you're more retarded than he is. How dare you? Shut up, shut up. Scott goes to the front door and opens it. Get the hell out. Excuse me? No one talks that way to Kayla or Greg. Get out. As you let them have their happy ending, this just got good and you ain't kicking this aunt out. You, you're... I can't. We sit down and we figure this out. No. Don't you worry. I know a doctor who will take care of this. Please, this isn't the time to discuss this. Janice goes to the front door. Please, listen. You haven't listened to me. Because you never cared about what I want. Kit Kat, you don't talk to her like that. I've been treated like crap all day. I'm sorry that you have to find out this way, but it's the truth. I try so hard, but you don't care. Kayla breaks down into sobs and runs out the door. Babe. Greg tries getting up, but Scott gently forces him back down. Don't worry, I'll go. No. Janice goes to the closet, gets two jackets, and looks outside. Leave her. Hold lots of sense into her. And maybe I need to be out there too. Janice exits. Greg and Scott look at Susie. Well, don't look at me. I have all the sense I need right here. Lights out on the house. Lights come up downstage. Kayla's sitting on the bench. She tries to warm herself and she wipes tears from her eyes. Janice enters. One of those coats for me. Janice sits down and puts a coat around Kayla and one around herself. We were planning on putting the ultrasound pictures in your stocking at Christmas. So the whole stomach ache and not eating. Let the pregnancy fun begin. We could go watch White Christmas. We always love that. No, thank you. Come on, it's your favorite tradition. Because it was Papa's. I have no idea how this happened. I was just planning a wedding with the dirt bag that everyone loved. And now I'm pregnant with a dad who everyone hates. We don't hate. You heard what Aunt Susie said. But I didn't say it. Well, you didn't say anything. Mom, you just, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I have questions. Income, housing, keeping you safe. Can he even hold a baby? You think I'm not worried too? I'm not blind. He can't cut his food, but I still love him. 
I know. And when Aunt Susie was talking about those things with Papa. Greg is not Papa. Some of those things were true. He did choke and fall. I am his taxi driver. And yeah, I may get more distracted with him around. Yeah, you cannot compare the two. Papa was not as active, fun, laughing, talking like Greg. I mean, the truth is I'm kind of glad of that we see the problems this time. Can you see depression, anxiety, alcoholism, womanizing? Because Joel fooled me. If Greg's weaknesses are swaggering around, slurred speech, and uh, eating messy, then he's a better person than I am. Do I have a million questions and concerns? Yes. But I won't run from this one. I won't run from you. The last thing I ever want is for you to think that I don't care. I know you do. You said something earlier about getting your heart broken means you gave it your all. Yeah. You got that from Papa. I miss him, Ma. I know. Blackout. End of scene four. Scene five. Merry Christmas, Greg. Morning. Janice is cleaning the last bit of mess in the living room. The fall decorations are down. There's a medium-sized box on the coffee on the coffee table labeled Christmas. Greg's wheelchair is gone. Janice finishes cleaning. She goes to the couch and opens the box and starts pulling out Christmas decorations. Kayla walks downstairs. Christmas already? Some can't even wait this long, but Thanksgiving deserves love. Oh. I didn't hear you get I didn't hear you get up. I just did. Usually Greg wakes me up. He's not the quietest person. Must have been really zonked out. <sighs> Is Greg in the kitchen? No, I haven't seen him all morning. Janice starts placing Christmas decorations here and there. I woke up and he was in my A. So was dad. Uh-oh, dad killed Greg. Probably took him to see Black Friday in action. <laughs> or he's buttering him up to get Notre Dame tickets. I think. He's the first guy you brought home that dad actually likes. Kayla looks through the Christmas box. I thought Aunt Susie gave us Papa's old suit. Oh, it's not in there? No. Probably back in the attic somewhere. Hmm. Today will be my first Black Friday without a picture with Santa. Mine too. Santa always showed up for breakfast. Papa did that for you guys too? It was so he could find out what Susie and I wanted. Then he would go to Black Friday shopping and bring home a giant tree. <laughs> Papa was a sly dog. Oh, I almost forgot. My OB who delivered you is retired now. So I tracked down his number and he recommended a few places. I don't know what your student insurance covers but I think you just need to call and tell him. I know. I didn't have the most positive reaction last night, but I want you to have the baby here with us. I, I, I did the math and you should be due in the summer after you graduate. And dad and I have so many airline points. We can fly you guys down for appointments. Mom. I know this weekend was rough and I don't know if I'm comfortable with everything, but I'm going to try to understand. And I don't want you to push us away, especially now. Are you okay with this? No, but I believe in you. Mm, thanks. You don't seem as sick today. <laughs> then you haven't seen the upstairs bathroom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Things will work, but I... I just... Every future parent has fears. I still forget to bathe myself, so my kid would be screwed. <laughs> nah, just stinky. I hope we didn't scare Greg off last night. <laughs> nah, 
He's the optimist as usual. He knows life is tough, but he just doesn't care. Like he doesn't have time to. I wonder if it's okay to think that way. Don't know, but it makes others feel better. Mom? Yeah? Thanks for letting us come. Front door opens. Scott enters. Oh, good. You guys are up. Of course we are. It's almost noon. It is? Wow. You should be at the store. Don't worry about that. Where's Greg? Just stand here. Scott runs to the door. Ready? Greg enters. Greg is wearing a Santa suit and he is driving his wheelchair that has been made to look like Santa's sleigh with cardboard. Greg stops right in front of the door. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dad's old suit. Figured he'd want the tradition to continue. Plus, his suit wouldn't fit over my belly. I can't believe you did this. Been up since four. Is it okay? It's wonderful. Now we just need the tree. Wait, wait, wait. Greg drives his wheelchair to the front of the stage as he is pulling a big Christmas tree. Sorry about the pine needles. Who cares about the needles when we get the whole tree? Blackout. End of scene five. End of play. <laughs>